Welcome to Superior Profit Morning Market Meeting, 21st March 2019. I am Sagar Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. As usual, I will not take time to introduce myself. I will use the time to analyze the market. If you are interested to know more about me, the company or its trading systems and products, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. This session is meant for demonstrating the use of Q systems, how it can be used for top-down, bottom-up, and inside-based identification of trade opportunities. This is different from the weekly market roundup video that I post every week, that is more focused on top-down analysis. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our analysis with global market indices. We are looking at the Australian index, AXJO, using the weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart or entry chart. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity for swing trading at the right edge in only a few seconds. After displaying the bullish headwind in the weekly chart, AXJO had a strong up move. In Q technique, once the up move starts and you are able to get into the move early, you may continue to hold it until the weekly backdrop color changes to yellow. This is true when the market is going up strongly, not going up and then recovering somewhat, pulling back somewhat and then going up again. If it is going up strongly, which is true in case of AXJO, you may continue to hold it until the weekly candle color, backdrop candle color changes to yellow. And when it changes to yellow, then you may be careful and look at the daily interval for further signals, whether you should exit the position or you could try to buy when there is a pullback. What we see in the daily chart, Price was going up strongly. It was staying close to the upper boundary level. And then it pulled back to the value area. Today's candle is a bullish shape candle. So the color is yellow. If it goes up from here, that may give us a trend following long trade opportunity. However, the weekly candle shape is indecisive. Not only in the current week, today is Thursday, Australia Thursday market is already closed. Not only this week's candle shape is indecisive, the previous two weeks candle shapes are also not bullish. Therefore, you may be careful before buying into Australian market right now. China index CSI 300. Here after creating the false downside breakout, it is continuing to go up and unlike AXJO, Australian index, it is maintaining the weekly backdrop candle color as cyan, bullish. Therefore, you may continue to hold on to the index or any stock that is going up with the index. 
in the daily chart we see there was a pullback and then it recovered again as the weekly candle color is continuing to be bullish you may continue to hold a long position in csi 300 Hang Seng Index, Hong Kong market. Here, it is not so bullish as the China market. The weekly candle color has changed to yellow for three weeks now. And this week's candle shape is bearish with long upper tail. In the daily chart, it tried to go above this watermark resistance level, but failed and came back inside creating a false upside breakout. That is not bullish. At the same time, there is a memory support line very close to the Thursday's close to this close. Therefore, there is no short opportunity either. If you are holding a long position, you may be cautious and put trailing stop just below this memory support line. If you want to give more space, you could also put stop below the second memory support line that would depend on where you entered the position long position india market nifty index nsei it broke out of the sideways range few weeks ago and now it is going up. I mentioned in the last morning meeting also that our previous long entry would have been at this point using the sideways market box trade setup either in the index itself or its constituent stocks or any stock in the India market that was going up with the index. Then it hit the upper limit of the sideways range we would have booked partial profit at that point for sure at either of these two levels as it was able to break out of the range we would continue to hold partial position and that would serve us well because it is continuing to move upward in this manner we try to take some money off the table book profit on partial position usually either half position or two-third of position and apply trailing stop on the remaining position trying to let profit run if it was a stock then we would also look at its industry and fundamentals if industry was strong fundamental was strong and technically it hit initial profit target that means it must have been bullish we would continue to hold partial position that is the standard guideline uk market FTSE index ftac the weekly backdrop candle color and shape both are bullish in daily chart, it created higher high and higher low. And after that, it went up. You could take a long position at either of these two points. Using that trend following, go with flow, long trade setup. None of those entries had hit the stop loss. If you entered at this point, the stop would be just below recent low here. And if you entered at the second opportunity, the stop would be just below the recent low of that time, which would be here. None of those were hit. Instead, it hit the upper boundary level. That would be the initial profit target. And with discipline, you would book at least partial profit. If you are holding a long position, you may take note of the triangle pattern in the daily as well as in the weekly. 
if it is going to any of those price levels you may watch out and protect your profit in existing position look for reversal trade using any of the reversal trade setups that we have in Q's technique I will look at the USA market later let me try to find few trading opportunities from Q inside Q edge is the system for analyzing sectors and industries in real time sector industry rotation analyst we can see the sector rotation happening in real time the one day scorecard and heat map changes during market hours the same is true for industry we can find trading opportunities using the real time change or if we want we could also look at the weekly strength and weakness the scorecard and heat map under five day column to identify trading opportunity that is using top down analysis from sector to industry to stocks another way is to look at the insights in the insight tab we identify based or worst performing stocks under various categories this can be refreshed in real time by clicking any of these icons a specific icon will recalculate the best or worst performing stocks for that category and if you use this icon at the top the complete list icon then it will refresh all the categories it will take a bit more time maybe one to one and a half minutes because it does a lot of calculation on thousands of stocks you may use either technique to refresh it now market is closed the data is up to date let me go to one of my favorite categories best performing optimally valued stocks as of yesterday's close that is Wednesday's close what we see when we look under the industry column is all of them are in the energy sector isn't it amazing it rarely happens that all the best performing optimally valued stocks for a particular day are all in one single sector that shows the strength of the sector yesterday energy sector we can go to the dashboard tab and we can also visually see that energy sector yesterday outperformed everything else by far in fact only three sectors went up yesterday eight went down and the three that went up were utilities real estate and energy but utilities and real estate went up by very small percentages less than 0.2 percent whereas energy went up by 2.3 percent more than 10 times the second best performer yesterday if we look for the performance over five days then also energy is the best performer that means if you were watching the sector rotation and industry rotation in real time you could probably catch almost certainly could catch some bullish trades right at the time it was starting to go up in the community i shared some post in the traders forum let me revisit that in our forum i share trade ideas regularly these are not meant to be trade tips but demonstration of a disciplined way of analyzing stocks and you may find pretty interesting trading ideas from them
the stock that I am looking for is PBF. I don't remember the forum topic, so I can search for PBF. This was the forum post that I shared 10 days ago. Let's open that. This is how the chart looked like at that time when I analyzed it at the right edge. I don't have any inclination to sharing charts after the fact. I think that is not genuine. If someone has a disciplined approach, has some confidence on his or her trading system, one should be comfortable sharing ideas analysis at the right edge, not presenting them after the fact. I do the same in our forum. As of that time, I saw the weekly was creating a false downside breakout. It tried to go below the watermark support, but reverse. It also displayed a bull release signal. In the daily chart, it created a false downside breakout with extreme high pressure and also pressure U-turn. Pressure is a combination of displacement and volume. So it went up and it went up with high volume and that happened right after a high pressure down move. That's why we call it pressure U-turn. The stock was at pendulum low shown by the pendulum indicator band price extreme low, that would be a very low risk entry point, not only for swing trading, but also for longer term investments. It had displayed a bullish headwind earlier. Now price came to the same level and displayed a bullish headwind again. All these signals were bullish. One thing to note is that it had memory resistance lines in both weekly and daily. I mentioned of that in the post. One would be cautious keeping that in mind. However, most of the signals were bullish and that led me to take a long position in this stock. But before doing that, I checked its industry and fundamental as well. That is what we call Q360 degrees analysis where we buy a stock only if the stock is technically strong, its industry is strong or strengthening and its fundamental is strong as well. This was the fundamental scorecard of PBF when I shared the post. The valuation score was in cyan color showing it was having excellent valuation. And the Last quarter earnings growth was accelerating sharply from the previous quarter. It was paying a nice dividend of 4.1%. Whether you look at valuation or earnings growth or dividend, it was a strong fundamental stock. In terms of industry, it was weak for a long time. And then on the day of my posting, it became very strong and it became strong with acceleration. So in terms of industry, it was strengthening. This gave us a Q360 degree long trade opportunity. I took this trade using synthetic stock position. That means I sold a put. When I analyzed and shared it, you can see the price was at around 30.2. I sold a put 31 strike and I bought a call 31 strike for a credit. I didn't buy any protective put under the current strike. Instead, I was watching the stock to see if it fails the recent low. If it failed the recent low, then I would have exited it with a small loss. 
the risk profile was exactly same as buying the stock but I used the synthetic stock position by shorting the put 31 strike buying the call 31 strike what happened after that let us look at the dates the initial post was on March 11 then on March 16 I shared the subsequent follow-up my entry was on this day based on the bullish headwind signal and when price came here the synthetic long position had significant profit it had covered more than the risk distance when a swing trade covers more than the risk distance I tend to book at least partial profit what I did in this case is covered the short put position for a profit and that profit was enough to make my long call position totally free so I had captured some profit by the time PBF came to this point point two and I could ride the stocks up move using house money it is actually my money because by that time I had earned it but it is okay to say that it is house money it's not really house money by that time I had earned it let's look at PBF today what did I do with the call position I booked partial profit on this day in this case partial profit meant covering the short put for a profit that was enough to cover the cost of the call position then I saw on this day it displayed a bear release signal and it was coming down from the yellow direction line my entry was at this point and stop would be just below recent low I had booked partial profit somewhere at this point and on this day price started to go down from the yellow direction line that was declining and there was a memory resistance nearby so I closed my enter position in this case what it meant is I closed my 31 call strike for a profit when the stock was above 33 so that gave me good profit on both the short put position as well as the long call position this was a swing trend now if it can break out above the memory resistance in the daily chart I can see the weekly color is continuing to be cyan if the daily can break out of the memory resistance then one may consider buying the stock again putting a stop just below recent low one would do that only if the industry is also continuing to be strong coming back to insight on Wednesday yesterday all the best performing all the 10 best performing optimally valued stocks were in energy sector I revisited PBF explaining that if we were tracking the sector industry rotation in real time every day you could have bought some energy stocks at a low price and had significant profit in them already is there a trading opportunity in any of these stocks based on yesterday's move one thing I will like to say that if a stock like unit corp has moved up by seven percent yesterday the call options would be expensive if you could buy any of these stocks yesterday in the morning session that would still be okay if you try to buy them near market close using options the options should be heavily priced and most likely you would go through a few days at least 
when the call option should be in a loss. If you try to buy any of these stocks using call options today in the morning session, I think the options will be too expensive. You may wait for a pullback or try to buy the call options at a discount, maybe 30% discount of the mid price of yesterday's close. Having said that, let us look at these stocks because some people may be trading them using stock also. And for stock, we don't have the concern about price being higher at market close because it was bullish, not like that. For stocks, there is no volatility, implied volatility. So we can buy the stock today also if we find a bullish idea using 360 degrees analysis. I highlighted all these stocks. They went up by between about four to 7.2 percent. I have set my technical trading system to QLED that is using trade station. I could alternatively choose Q Global that is running on Metastock. For this analysis, I'm choosing QLED. When I highlight the stocks in Insight tab, click the chart icon. It will copy the stocks in a form that I can put in the sonar. I deleted some stocks I had in Sonar and I am pasting the stocks retrieved from QEdge inside by pressing Control V. You could also use right click and paste. And all these stocks instantly we can see move from opening price, move from closing price. They are very high. Some of them had false move, meaning the stocks initially tried to move down, but reversed. Those would be very low risk entry points like BCEI initially, it, it is telling initially yesterday it tried to go down then reversed. Same is true for DNR, HPR. Now, what did it happen like that? Why did it initially try to go down but reversed? It is possible, I'm not sure, I didn't check, but it is possible that there was some oil related news yesterday. We don't trade based on news, but we keep an eye on the events that are taking place. Let us have a look at the events of yesterday using ICON, going to economic events and choosing yesterday's date. Now, if you see there were some energy ethanol related news yesterday. I could include energy also in this list. Some ethanol related news, but those were in the afternoon. If the stocks were moving so much the move must have started earlier. What it shows that you may not always find news that is leading to the stocks movement. If you are relying on news to take your trades, it's probably going to hurt you more than benefit you. No harm keeping an eye on the news, but the actual trade, at least using Q technique is taken using the technical analysis, fundamental analysis and sector industry rotation analysis. So we had several stocks yesterday that initially tried to move down but reversed. And now we can see REI touched a memory support, trend line support and reversed. It also bounced from that line, meaning it went up with heavy activity. It had a pressure U-turn and very bullish pressure. All these stocks, most of them, except, except this one and this one, all of them are at pendulum low, meaning they are at a very low price. Most of them are also in a downtrend. You can see that from the direction column. Some of them are in an uptrend, but not above both the major 
direction lines that is white and yellow the dark green is telling that they are above one of the direction lines above one of two that is above one of either yellow or white if a stock is above both of the yellow and white direction lines this direction color in sonar dashboard using radar would have been bright green some of them are still inside a squeeze we can see that and yesterday relative performance was strong for all of them from the option percentile column you can see that for rei for example the option percentile is very high that means the options are very expensive if you are trying to take a bullish position it may be more worth taking them by short put vertical and not by buying the call option outright because the option volatility is high that means options are highly priced it is more profitable to sell the option there are some stocks where the option percentile is low meaning option volatility percentile is low those are indicated by magenta or red color you could also try to buy options if the option volatility is in the middle but if the option volatility is already green or cyan then it is too expensive in my view to buy the options several of them gave go with flow trend following long trade setup also let's look at bcei the different qle tabs are linked so if i click on bcei it will come to the at a glance template chart in the weekly chart it created a higher low and this week's candle color and shape both are bullish so far in the daily chart price came to this watermark support as well as this watermark support and went up creating a false downside breakout on monday it displayed a bullish headwind signal if you were a fast trader you could take a long position based on the bullish headwind signal itself provided the industry was strong at that time and the fundamental we can check out we'll ch fundamental we, we saw already it is a value stock we can check its earnings growth why i am saying we already know it is a value stock because we selected this stock from the inside category best performing value stock so fundamentally it must be of optimal valuation we can check if it has earnings growth but just based on fundamental valuation also we can buy a stock at the bottom using that and using industry strength we could buy it on monday itself at market close and if you did that by wednesday market close you already had enough profit at the peak certainly you had more profit than that is taken in the trade you could cover at least partial position that is my tendency once the risk distance is covered i tend to book at least partial profit and if everything is strong i also like to hold on to partial position will you buy now now as of wednesday's close there is no q trade setup so if you are buying now it would be a discretionary trade it would not be a q trade setup the cyan color candle the flow color being cyan in the daily chart represents a possible trend following long opportunity that is for a trending market but this stock is not in an uptrend so we are not going to use the cyan color candle in daily chart to say there is a trend following buy opportunity there is no such setup in q technique 
it is in a sideways market or you may also say it, it is not in a downtrending market anymore but you can say it is in a sideways market in sideways market we could take a reversal trade using the headwind signal on monday or if there was a bull release signal you could use that but there is no trend following trade set up right now if you are bullish on this stock you could switch to intraday chart and try to look for buying opportunity for intraday entry we use a different chart template this intraday entry chart template that uses that relies on mostly pivot lines and trend lines today also after market open the early range high and low lines will form after that if price starts to move up above early range high and if the early range itself is not very wide then you could try to look for a low risk entry opportunity using intraday chart you could also try to look for an entry opportunity using bull release signal on intraday chart those are intraday entry techniques there is no swing trade entry opportunity using at a glance template in bcei you may carry out the analysis for the other stocks to see if there is any valid q setup as of yesterday's close we came to these stocks from q inside we looked at bcei they are in the category of best performing optimally valued stocks so they must be of good valuation let me click this binocular button to check the industry strength instantly i can see over five days it is very strong one of the strongest industries it was very weak earlier if i open up the recent days two day and one day periods we see it is continuing to remain very strong if i open up the pace column i don't get any information from there from the strength columns i can see it is strengthening very fast and it is already strong it is maintaining its strength what about its fundamentals the valuation is optimal that we know because we came from the inside category of best performing value stocks if we look at the earnings growth we can see it has excellent earnings growth for all the last three quarters therefore this stock is strong both in terms of valuation as well as earnings growth you may look for a buy opportunity though there is no q trade setup right now you may look at the other stocks in the inside category to see if they are giving any buy opportunity let's look at unit corp that was the biggest mover yesterday went up by 7.2 percent let's look at its fundamentals earnings growth is positive but it slowed down in the latest quarter from previous quarter unlike bcei which has very robust earnings growth throughout everything in bright green color that was for bcei but for unit corp the last quarter earnings growth in green color still positive but not as high as previous quarter the industry strong for unit corp let's look at unit corp's technicals there is no q trade setup right now it did display a bullish headwind in the weekly chart we are always watchful of the bullish headwind just like we are watchful about the other q signals bullish headwind is a unique signal that allows us to try to catch a stock at the very low similarly bearish headwind may help us try to catch a stock for a bearish trade at the very high here it displayed a bullish headwind 
and then this week is going up with bullish shape bullish color candle however there is a memory resistance in the weekly chart nearby in daily also there is a memory resistance nearby therefore there is no trade setup in unit corp right now if it could break out of the memory resistance you could look for a buying opportunity if you have a low risk entry opportunity we are not usually fond of breakout traders because breakout trades usually don't give low risk entry opportunity. If we have a low risk entry opportunity, we are fine to take it. More likely is it will break up, pull back and go up again and we'll try to catch it the, at the swing low, just as it pulls back and goes up again. That would be one technique to wait for the breakout. Another technique could be to see if the stock is coming to the memory support line and there are multiple memory supports in daily as well as weekly if the stock is able to come to the memory support and then reversing from there then you could look for a very low risk entry opportunity at that point you would do that only if the industry is also strengthening at that time that was a look at some of the stocks using inside category how is the market looking now let's look at some of the futures and then we, if we have time we may come back to some of the inside categories maybe looking for worst performing stocks looking for shorting opportunity for that let us see how the market is doing i have set up the futures here using weekly interval and then the futures using daily interval for the week so far all the market futures nq es ym and rty all of them are down rty russell 2000 is down the most several weeks ago i shared a post in twitter when the russell 2000 was going up sharply telling if the market turns down this would be the hardest to fall that is coming true the backdrop candle color in the weekly chart for rty turned magenta the shape is also bearish in the last market roundup last weekend market roundup i mentioned rty was inside a triangle pattern and advised to wait to see where it is going is it breaking up or breaking down before deciding on the next swing trade so far it seems it is breaking down if you were watching russell 2000 yesterday you can see it tried to go it opened below the memory support then it tried to go up and it reversed if you were watching russell 2000 yesterday the point at which it reversed that is at this point you could take a short trade putting stop just above days high that would be very profitable trade using futures day trade probably the memory support was at 1561 let's say 1560.9 so let's say 1561 if we go to the entry chart template let us draw the line 1561 This was the price level of the daily memory support line. Price tried to go above that, then reversed. Early range high was also very near to that price. So you would wait for price to go down below early range high. That would be a false upside breakout the up move here was accompanied by heavy activity then we had a bear release signal this is the technique that i was alluding to a while ago if we have a bear release signal and we have a basis to take a trade based on longer term interval daily interval in this case then we can take a trade when price comes 
below a particular pivot level. In this case, the early range high. So your entry price would be at this point, stop would be just above recent high, which ended up being the day's high. By the time price came to this pivot level, what was this level? This was overnight low. You'd have covered about the same as risk distance and therefore you would book partial profit. You might hold on to partial position or you could book full profit up to you. If you hold on to partial position, you would be holding it even now. That is how you can look at the support resistance and other signals, headwind or bear release signal, etc on the daily weekly interval and then switch to the intraday chart to take very low risk trades. Let's look at the other futures. E-mini, the weekly is giving us a bearish shape candle. In the last market roundup, I based my analysis based on this candle. The candle was very bullish. Still, I mentioned in the weekly market roundup that market is giving conflicting signal. It is not the time to take long positions. That was very useful because so far, E-mini S&P 500 futures is also reversing. There is a memory support nearby you may see if this memory support is broken. If it is broken, you may be more careful about holding long positions in this future and also in any stock that is moving with this future. If you look at the daily periods here, all of the futures are down as of now in the overnight market. Now it is 8.48 a.m. Market will open at 9.30. As of now, all the market futures are down. So it seems to, it is probably going to open with a, a gap. Will there be a gap? From the futures, it looks like at least for, let's look at RTY again. Not gap yet. It is going to be a lower open, but so far, it is not pointing to a gap down open. The traffic light candle color in RTY is red, bearish. It is breaking below support. Let's look at the inside category to see if there is any possible short opportunity. We have this category, worst performing growth stocks. Growth stocks can go up very fast and come down very fast. These are the worst performing growth stocks. Where are they? Many of them are in regional banks. When several stocks are in the same industry, that means they are moving not only because of weakness of the stock itself, but also because of industry level weakness. Let us look at these stocks and see if there is any shorting opportunity in any of them. You can highlight any of the columns and click on the chart icon. Go back to Sonar, delete the previous stocks and paste these regional banks. All of them are looking weak, isn't it? A while ago, we dropped all the energy stocks, best performing value stocks. And most of the sales in Sonar dashboard were green cyan colors. Let me maximize. But here you can see most of the sales in Sonar dashboard are magenta and red colors. That is showing the opposite performance of energy stocks and regional banks. Energy stocks are bullish and regional banks are bearish. Barring, not, not everyone, every one of them went down with heavy pressure. That is very high activity plus heavy displacement. You can see all of them moved by 
moved down by more than 4%. The direction column is showing that all of them are in downtrend, bright red meaning below both the direction line. So if we get a short setup, that will be very nice. Let's look at CFG and TCBI. They may give potential trend following short opportunity as indicated by the GWF go with flow column. This is looking good instantly. The Q charts are designed in a way that just by a glance you can know whether the stock is strong or weak and whether there is a trading opportunity or not. The weekly is magenta, backdrop color is bearish, relative performance tilting down, created a lower high and falling down from here, there. In the daily, it was inside a triangle pattern and it broke below the triangle pattern yesterday. Is it too late to enter the short trade? If you are using daily interval in Q technique, it is a bit late. We are not fond of, personally, I am not fond of taking breakout trades. However, it is looking bearish enough. So you may keep an eye on this stock for a low risk short entry opportunity using intraday charts. CFG, let's look at the other stock. Second stock, TCBI. Also breaking down below memory support, breaking out of a triangle pattern with heavy pressure. Everything is bearish for this stock also. If you are holding a long position, you may better exit that position or hedge that position. And again, for my style, it is a bit too late to enter a short trade. I would have entered it yesterday just as it tried to go above the memory support but failed and came down. That would be shorting somewhere here probably. That would be very profitable. Similar to the technique that I explained in trading RTY yesterday. It is also looking weak. Let's look at these two stocks fundamentals. TCBI. I click the peer analysis button. Fundamentally, it has good valuation. Earnings growth is also strong. Decreasing, but strong. So fundamentally, it is not weak. Technically, it is looking weak. What about the industry? Industry is very weak. So technically, it is weak. Industry is very weak. Fundamentally, this particular stock is not weak. Fundamentals are very useful in our technique. However, when a market drops, when a particular industry drops and stocks in that industry drop, then you may consider taking short trades even if fundamentals are strong because fundamentals come out once a quarter. You may be able to take short trades before the next running result comes out. What about the other stock that we looked at? What was the other stock? CFG. CFG, I'm clicking the peer analysis button. This is also a fundamentally strong stock. Good valuation and good earnings growth. Industry is same industry week. So we have two stocks in financials where the industry is weak, technicals are very weak. However, the fundamentals are good. What about this stock AXP? I shared it in a forum post. It is not a regional bank, but a financial sector stock. To me, it was looking weak on this yellow candle and I shared it in a forum post. Let me revisit that post. Going to the forum. Consumer finance stock gave a box short trade setup. That was on March 20th. That's yesterday actually. At that time, 
the industry was looking weak. It had deceleration shown by magenta color score under PACE 2D, two days column and the recent days strength score under this five days, two days, one day column is showing weakness also. If you look at the fundamentals, AXP, American Express, it is overvalued and it is having reducing earnings growth. Earnings growth is still positive, but it is reducing. This is very different from the two regional banks that we saw just now in terms of fundamentals. This is much weaker. Overvalued plus reducing earnings growth. Whereas the regional banks were optimally valued. The valuation scores were in sand color and their earnings growth was steady, bright green. What about technicals? This is how the chart looked like when I shared the idea. The weekly had displayed a bear release signal. The weekly candle color turned yellow and it was creating a false upside breakout, trying to go above this watermark resistance level, but failing and coming back down. In the daily, there was a bearish headwind at the very top sometime in December last year that led to a huge and sharp price drop. And now gradually price moved up, came to the same level where we had the bearish headwind. There was a watermark resistance level, tried to go up and fail. There was a bear release signal on this day. Earlier price tried to go up with heavy activity and then reverse. That was the signal for a box short trade setup with very low risk. The stop would be just above recent high. Entry would be at this point. There is a memory support nearby so you could book profit when price came to the memory support that would cover more than the risk distance. The signal day was this day and I shared it next day near market open in the morning session. This is a stock unlike the regional banks that was giving a 360 degree short trade opportunity. Industry was weak, fundamental was weak and technically it gave a box short trade setup. How did it end yesterday? AXP, it ended at 110.77, 110.77. And when I shared it, it was 111.5. So it already dropped by 80 cents. Already dropped by 80 cents since I shared it. If you were watching it, you could short it even at a higher price than 111.5. You could use the intraday chart template to short it earlier. It takes quite a few minutes to get all these snapshots ready and put the text and post it. If you were not doing that like I was doing, you could short it even earlier and you would have some profit already by now. If it hits the memory support, you could consider booking some profit. Let's have another look at the futures. These are today's performance. All are in red. Russell 2000, as I expected, is the worst performer. Let's look at that. Still, it is above yesterday's low. Another 30 minutes to go. We'll see if there is a gap down open or a simply lower open. Whatever the market direction is, we are able to find very low risk and high probability trades using the 360 degrees analysis. You may go through the other forum posts and understand how the system and technique can be applied in any market condition. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.